Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we are playing with some brand new Lechuza products. These are self-watering pots. And if you've been on my channel for a while, you know that I do actually have quite a few Lechuza self-watering pots, a few different models. I'm personally a fan, I like them. I was never sponsored by Lechuza or anything, but I genuinely liked the pots, even though they are a bit on the expensive side, I won't lie. But recently they actually came out with some self-watering pots for orchids. Is this something we wanna have? Is this done properly? I have no idea, but I do wanna find out. So this is a two-part, let's say, type of a video. First, we're gonna unbox the products, test them out together. Then I'm gonna let a few months pass, a few months or so, and I will come back with some final thoughts on these products, pretty much like I did with the Biorb. So before we start, don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it, and why not subscribe? I post multiple times a week. I post almost every single day. Right, so as I will open the boxes, let me just tell you a little bit of a story about Lechuza and not only a little story about reviewing products in general. So I've recently, and by recently I mean a couple of years ago, I realized that I don't really enjoy companies sending me products to review or to make a video for because it kind of doesn't feel right. Not all the products are great, in my opinion. I don't like all of the products and I just feel a little bad for the company sending me the product for free, me testing it out, not liking it. And also there's the aspect, wait, she got this product for free. Of course, she's gonna be mild on the product, which I'm not actually, uh, but you know, it makes sense. I would think the same thing probably. So what I decided to do is to stop accepting products. I mean, if I want a sponsorship, I will accept a sponsorship. And you guys know I don't do a lot of sponsorships. I mean, with a lot of people or brands, my only two sponsorships are Repotme, which is an old one, and I'm absolutely happy with it. And Skillshare, which is a new one, I'm okay with those sponsorships, but there are many, many companies who write to me. And one of these days, I promise, I'm gonna make a repot and chill telling you all about the type of sponsorships I get because it's actually a pretty, pretty funny topic. Sorry, let me mute my phone. And if you know how I do my sponsorships, you know that I like to integrate the products or the company or whatever into some sort of tutorial. I'm not just gonna make the ad. This is the product. This is how it's used. It's a little infomercially, right? And I do have that tendency to speak like I'm in an infomercial, even when I talk about IKEA stuff, which are not sponsored. Uh, so I decided, you know what? I'm just not gonna accept the products from the companies. If I wanna do reviews, which is not what my channel is necessarily all about, I'm just gonna purchase the product. Now, if it's a product that I just cannot afford and I'm extraordinarily curious and I think a review is well-deserved, then probably I'll accept it, but you know, it has to be something very special. And I have to say that Lechuza did contact me about two years ago or so. It was either at the beginning of the pandemic or right uh, before it. Anyway, they wanted to send me these orchid pots to try out in a video. And I told them, no, uh, I, I, I don't feel comfortable. My last product review with PR was with Gemma, which was fine. I, I'm still using the Gemma bulbs, as you saw in the Biorb video, but I didn't really feel very comfortable about it because in the end, I'm not filling my greenhouse with the Gemma bulbs, you know? Mm. They're great. They're just not necessarily what I need. I told Latrizza, listen, let's just do a sponsorship because I love your brand. I already spent hundreds of euros on your products. I will do a sponsorship with the products you already have. I'm perfectly fine. And they were okay with it. And then the pandemic started and kind of everything just fell apart. And I was like, that's fine. And it's very understandable. Many companies had issues, many people had issues, and that's just life, that's how it goes. And we never kind of picked up on the conversation. But I was actually curious to see these orchid pots, what they're all about. And you can see the packaging is, is big. I don't know why I thought they were actually pretty tiny, but no, they're pretty much like the standard 13 centimeters. Anyway, Long story short, yes, at some point I was about to make a sponsorship with Lechuza because it is one of the brands that I've really used a lot, I'm still using and I kind of really like. I'm not sure about these pots. I didn't want to review them because there was a high chance I didn't like them. 
and I will tell you why I think I'm not necessarily gonna super love them, but I want to see if I'm wrong about it. Um, so yeah, we almost had a sponsorship with Lechuza, that didn't happen, that's absolutely fine. But these products that I'm trying out today are purchased by myself from Amazon. I'll link you to them down below if you want to check them out. But yeah, uh, the company did not send me these guys. They wanted to and I declined. So that's where we are with Lechuza. However, in our conversations, I did actually learn that the pawn, which if you guys remember, I have a review on, I didn't like it. I'll link you down below. It kind of burned my Paphiopetalums or the leaves. And I told them that. I told them that the pawn, I'm not using, I'm not a fan of. And they said, hey, we kind of reformulated the pawn. Give it another try. So I was pretty intrigued about it. So what we're gonna be testing today is this pot, which apparently is an orchid pot, with a self-watering system and the orchid pond. Is it an orchid pond? <gasps> orchid! I did not read this! It's actually orchid pond! <laughs> okay. <laughs> is it different than the normal pond? I don't know. Maybe I'll try to get in touch with them again and ask them more about the pond. I didn't talk to them in two years or so. Um, but yeah, apparently this is orchid pond. Let's just see what we have here. So a beautiful mask, as you can see, looks like a tulip and a transparent inner pot, which does have drainage. It also has a place to put a wick, which I see we are provided with. It also has the gauge we need to assemble it. It will go right here. What it doesn't have is extra ventilation slits. If we're cheeky enough, we can do them ourselves. So I'm gonna consider that a little bit because it's not a small pot, you guys, and I don't have super big orchids right now. Or maybe I, ooh, I do. I think I have Phalaenopsis, which will be okay in this, even without the ventilation slits. With Phalaenopsis, I have the courage to do a lot of stuff. Uh, with other things, no, I would just put ventilation, but it's easy. You just need a cheap soldering iron, do this outside because plastic fumes, are toxic, they're not healthy. Anyway, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna use it as it is, but my main concern is that since everything is transparent and there is quite a lot of space between the inner pot and the mask, we're gonna have some algae issues. Look how much light can get into the pot. It's, it's not needed for roots, really, honestly. So I'm afraid we're gonna have some algae here. Now this is something that happens in my environment, not everybody will have to deal with it, but that's my concern. And my second concern is, do you notice that this pot has a lip, a very thick lip? Yeah, you know what this lip does? It creates a seal. So when we put this pot inside, we have a seal here, so there's no airflow. Next question, do we use the orchid pond or not? Tell you what, I have two of these. In one, I'm gonna use the orchid pond. In the other, I won't. I know, I know, I'm a rebel like that. So now that I told you my worries, let's just assemble this guy and see what he's all about. Assembling is very easy. It's just like any other Lechuza product if you've ever used them. Very similar system, actually. I can never get this through the hole. There we go. Ta-da! Perfect. And now the wick, which is just like any other wick from Lechuza. Off camera, I will assemble the second pot as well. And let's just uh, get to repotting. I need to choose two Phalaenopsis orchids, unpot them, again behind the camera, let's not waste time, and I'll put them right here. Be back in a little while. All right, so here we have our first victim, I mean orchid. This one, I don't know what it is. It's a mini Phalaenopsis. I never put a tag on it. It's just gonna be a surprise when it's gonna bloom. So this one will be in Orchid Pond. Now the instructions do not suggest to rinse Orchid Pond. I'm not sure if it has any type of fertilizer. It doesn't really say on it, but I will assume it has something. So I'm putting a layer of this medium on the bottom. Hopefully it's enough. Then I'm gonna place the orchid inside. Hopefully it's gonna fit the roots. I think it will. There we go. And I'll just continue to add to this pawn, which looks scary, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know if I like it, but anyway, we're just gonna try it, why not? 
And well, it's uh, it's barely enough. Good thing I have two satchels, but yeah, it's uh, almost enough. You know what? I'm just gonna leave it as it is because I'm nervous just by looking at it. I might just repot this orchid very, very soon. So I'm, I'm just gonna leave it like that. However, though, I will water this orchid and then I'm gonna put it in the mask. All right, so here we are. It's very heavy, you guys. I will not put water in the reservoir just yet. I'm gonna see how fast this medium dries. It's scary because it's very, very fine, but yeah, I gotta try it out. I do appreciate the fact that it was a little bit moist, so there wasn't any dust in the air, even though when I ran water through this medium, I did see quite a lot of dust in the sink, but it didn't spread in the air, so I really do appreciate that. It doesn't seem to smell like anything. So yeah, we'll see how this does. I'm skeptical, but you know, I have been wrong before. Now let's do the other pot with my traditional sphagnum moss and bark mixture because that one works with self-watering as well. It's very wicking, so it works. Now sadly on this pot, this little cap does not want to go in like at all. Nope, cannot be bothered. So at some point, I'll have to get a file and try to file a little bit the pins, make them fit. Not now though, but just so you know, that's why it's a little wonky. And here is our second victim, I mean orchid. <laughs> I'm joking. And with this one, we're gonna make my little layering system with sphagnum moss at the bottom close to the wick to wick the water very easily. Then we're gonna place the orchid inside. Oh, what the heck am I doing? <laughs> There we go. So this one, just gonna place some bark around the root system and also sphagnum moss. My materials are not dusty, which is great. And they've proven themselves. So I do have quite a lot of faith in this setup rather than the other one, but hey. With this one, I am also going to be adding i have a lot of stuff on my little desk here so i'm also going to be adding the slow release fertilizer i use osmocote pro high k because i know these materials are not pre-fertilized and because this container has no extra ventilation i left quite a few air pockets bigger than i usually would but I think it's going to be better in this setting. I left the sphagnum moss very, very fluffy and airy. And yeah, we'll see how this one does. I would say it's not really ideal. And especially with self-watering, I personally would have done it differently. Now, one of the things I would have done is to make sure this pot has extra ventilation as well. But again, due to the design that I showed you at the beginning, even if it had extra ventilation slits, that would have been useless because this big lip, which I I don't see the reason for it, but hey, maybe just design. You cannot make design be more important than functionality. If you do that, you get the biorb. <laughs> Sorry, biorb. I still like you. What I was getting at is that even if you had slits, they wouldn't have worked because this lip creates a sort of a seal with the mask, which is not ideal. And I'm thinking for me, it will be okay. It will work because I do have a pretty warm climate and hey, it's the middle of October and we still have over 30 degrees Celsius in the daytime. But I imagine that for other people in very, very different climates, it's really not gonna be the same story. So not very versatile. Right, so I'm gonna water this as well. And I'm gonna come back with some thoughts before we wrap up part one of this video. Alrighty, here we are. Where to start? Uh, I don't really like these pots. I feel like Lechuza has done fantastic with their previous pots, which you can see in my videos. I'll add some in the description. All of their designs I really liked. This one I really don't. <laughs> it's very, very, very bulky. So it takes up a lot of space. They look so tiny in these pots. I'll give it that not everybody is a little concerned with space. Most people who do actually purchase these things have one, two, three orchids. They have them in their house as accents, maybe the centerpiece of a table case in which the size can actually emphasize the orchid or at least fits. It makes a lot more sense in that scenario. In my grow space, not really. I'm struggling for space. Second, because the mask is higher in the back, I know that they were trying to go for this tulip look. I get it. I like it. But the fact that Phalaenopsis have aerial roots, roots will bump into this. They will 
struggle to find their way, they're not gonna become pended and just droop around the pot like you would have them in a normal pot. Then, of course, I don't like the fact that this creates a sort of a seal. I also don't really understand the use of this lip. I can definitely, definitely use them with other plants and I think they will be great. And hey, you know what? Maybe in my house, they will actually make much more sense. Don't get me wrong, I don't think they're ugly. I think they are beautiful. I know what they were going for. The only reason I'm not a fan is because of all of these limitations that I have in the grow space. For the purpose of this channel, I'll try them on the orchids, see how they do, even if I don't have a lot of space. But in the future, I see myself using other types of plants with these guys, philodendrons or I don't know, something else. Not necessarily orchids. These guys eventually will outgrow the pots. The pots are actually not very big. The mask is big. So yeah, I'll just have to keep you up to date. You know me, it takes me a few months to have proper final thoughts, just to make sure that I give you the best information that I can give you. So stay tuned. I will make sure to post a link in the comment section, like the pinned comment. I'm gonna make it a link to an update with these guys and I'll let you know how it goes. So yeah, quite pretty design, but in this scenario, it just doesn't fit. I would prefer to have something a little bit more tidy, I guess. Phalaenopsis, honestly, not the best choice for the design. I would have an orchid that is rather tall, maybe a cattleya. But then again, with cattleyas, I would really like to have more ventilation. You know, I'm gonna customize this. <laughs> Might as well. I, I can customize this thing to have more ventilation. But since Phalaenopsis are the easiest, most available, most forgiving, you know, that's why we're trying them. And yeah, I'm nervous about this one. But we'll see about it. So that's about it for today. Thank you so much for watching. By the way, let me know if you've used these. How do they work for you? Let us know in the comments below and stay tuned for an update. We'll see how it does. So thank you for joining me and hanging out with me today. Hope you had a good time. Subscribe to my channel for more orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, updates, and other fun orchid subjects. If you wish to support the channel, do consider becoming a member or visit the merch store linked down below in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. It's always nice to stay in touch there as well. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Uh...